आचार्य जी प्रणाम वन बीइंग आस्क्ड कैन कर्म एवर कम टू एन एंड रमण महर्षि सेज कर्माज कैरी द सीड ऑफ देयर ओन डिस्ट्रक्शन इन देम सेल्वस डियर आचार्य जी प्लीज हेल्प मी अंडरस्टैंड हाउ कर्माज कैरी द सीड ऑफ देयर ओन डिस्ट्रक्शन कर्म इज एक्शन वी डू नॉट जस्ट एक्ट वी एक्ट विद द इंटेंशन ऑफ obtaining fruit of the action so the actor is there the actor acts as per his own personal intellect desires calculations projections and he speculates calculates that his action will get him a particular result the result is in his estimation in his imagination pretty lucrative in fact it is for the sake of that result that he acts so far so good but then comes the disappointing part and the disappointing part is the results are never as anticipated and never means never here you would probably object you would say but sometimes we do succeed in getting results of our choice no i would still insist what is it that the actor is actually seeking in the result the actor is seeking contentment completion a finality a solution in the result the actor doesn't merely act the actor is a very frustrated entity the actor acts for the sake of bringing an end to his frustration so you must realize that whatsoever is the targeted result the actual target is contentment the action is for the sake of the result and the result is for the sake of contentment now the whole equation can go wrong at two places first is you acted anticipating a particular result and the result itself didn't arrive since the result didn't arrive so you were not contented bad the second probability is you acted for the sake of a certain result and the result was as per your wish yet this 
fulfillment of the wish couldn't fulfill you the wish was fulfilled you were not there was no contentment the actor is left high and dry high because he has obtained the desired result dry because the desired result does not suffice so if the first scenario in which the action failed to fetch the desired result was bad then the second scenario where the action succeeds in fetching the desired result is worse now that is not a very attractive position to be in a position in which you have to choose between bad and worse would you want to be in a position where these are the only two choices available one choice is bad the other choice is worse but then that's the situation of the actor he has to pick one of these two very badly placed is he hmm? now what does ramana maharshi mean when he says karma carries within itself the seed of its own destruction the actor has invested a lot in the action the actor is the action as long as the actor believes in himself he will have no choice but to act the way he does the actor and the action are not separable which means that the actor cannot really change his action without changing himself please understand the actor really has no choice with respect to the action as long as the actor remains who he is the actor is the action now if the action and the subsequent flow of events are quite painful then the actor thinks of quitting the action correct the actor brings about the action the action brings about the result and the result fails in bringing about contentment and all this has involved a lot of investment of time and energy and hope and commitment right the actor sees this much the actor says uh, this entire train of events is no good sometimes things are bad at other times they are just worse this is no good so what is it that he can change the action but he cannot change the action if he remains who he is the actor is the action so the actor is now badly stuck if he remains who he is then the only two choices are bad and worse and if he wants to avoid the bad then he cannot remain who he is he has to go away dissolve give himself up it's almost like death quite scary the imagination part of it hmm? so the actor in spite of all the big bats and all the frustrations and defeats he has received still tries again see he is the actor what else can he do he is choiceless in a sense as long as he remains who he is he will be compelled to keep doing stupid things so he embarks on another such stupid pursuit which is to try again modify the action a little superficially and hope that the results will be different this time the results are not the results are not he puts in more hard work hoping that the results will be different you see there was this lane hmm the lane ended in some kind of a huge 
hole that looked into the sewer. So the actor used to walk down the lane and reach the end where, was, where there was nothing but rubbish and stink. And this used to disappoint him. He decides that things must change. He decides that things must change with him remaining who he is with no change in himself. He decides to work hard. He meets some motivational gurus and they tell him work harder, you will succeed. So now instead of walking down that lane, he starts running. He hopes that by running he will reach some other place. To his utter frustration, he discovers that he is only reaching the same stench faster and more frequently. This method didn't succeed. So he tries another clever method. He says, I used to walk facing the dead end. Now I will walk backwards. You see, I have changed my approach 180 degrees. So the results should also change 180 degrees. Earlier, I used to walk with my face towards the end of the lane. Now I will walk backwards. I will not look towards the huge store of rubbish. I will look in the opposite direction. I will walk backwards. So he walks backwards. And he is dismayed. He has still reached the same place. Not only reached the same place, this time he has reached the same place with a few bruises. Walking backwards, he stumbled upon stones hit against strangers and got abused. All those things happened additionally to him. Are you getting it? Having tried all kinds of methods and cleverness, then the actor realizes that he has to go. He is his own suffering. He does not have a suffering. He is the suffering. That is what Ramana Maharshi means here. When Ramana Maharshi says, Karma carries the seeds of its own destruction, what he really means is, going one step deeper, Karta carries the seeds of his own destruction. The actor, as he is constructed, is not sustainable. The actor, as he is conditioned, as he is modeled, as he is designed, is not stable. He has no longevity. At some point, he has to give in. At some point, he has to accept defeat and surrender. So, Karta carries within himself the seeds of his own destruction and therefore Karma carries within itself the seeds of its own destruction. What are the seeds of destruction? The fact that your actions will never get you what you want from your actions. And that is why your actions will have to meet an end, a destruction. You act. The more you act, the more you will discover that your actions are really going futile. Hence, the more you act, the closer you will come towards the destruction of the action. The more active, the more desirous, the more confident the actor is, the faster he is running towards his own end. 
Are you getting it? Hmm? That is what Ramana Maharshi means here. I have a question, Acharya ji, based on the, you know, the response you just gave on Ramana Maharshi. So you were saying there are two things into this. The first thing is uh, wherein when you reach your particular goal, so then you feel bad. And you said that it is quite more worse if, if for example, you are able to reach your goal because in both the things we are not reaching the completion. Uh, so nowadays, nowadays I see, uh, you know, specifically youth, they keep on keeping these particular quote uh, within their DPs or other things. So this quote comes from a very famous uh, American Canadian actor, Jim Carrey. So uh, I would like want to just quote it firstly. He says that uh, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamt so so they can see that it's not the answer. So but so in this context he's probably making the second option which you have just quoted as the uh, a very good thing to happen. So, uh, like, what, what do you think in the same context? Like, because you just mentioned that it, it is something which is more worser than the first one. So, if you can just shed some light on the same. In itself, the statement is not incorrect. Let, let there be wealth and fame. And you will discover that wealth and fame are not the answer. In itself, that is not an incorrect statement. The only thing is that it is a very inefficient approach. It is a very inefficient approach. Especially the thing about fame. You see what is fame? Fame by definition is exclusive. If everybody is famous, then nobody is famous. Fame must exclude Right? Which means that if a thousand people try for fame, only two can be famous. Right? It's a clear mathematical limitation. It does not depend upon social conditions or anything. It is like a law of nature. You cannot alter it. If a thousand people try for fame, really only two can be famous. Because fame is not a material commodity. Fame is the space that you occupy in somebody's mind. Correct? And the mind space is limited. You cannot store 40,000 people in your mind. Which means that you cannot make 40,000 people famous. How many people can you remember as important? 2, 4, 10, 20, 50? So only these many can be famous. 40,000 people cannot occupy mind space of others. So 40,000 cannot be famous. Hmm? 40,000 can be wealthy, but cannot be famous. I'll come to wealth as well, but first fame. So, 1,000 people tried for fame, 2 succeeded. For the remaining 998, it was a sheer waste of effort, correct? That's what I'm saying. Secondly, even these two might obtain fame after 40 years of work. So after 40 years of work, they become famous just to discover that fame doesn't help. Couldn't the process have been shorter? So while what is being said in the statement is not incorrect, it is just inefficient. It is a very bad way of realizing. Hmm? Now come to wealth. Wealth is both objective and subjective. Unfortunately, for us it is 99% subjective. What is the objective component of wealth? Whether you have enough to sustain your body, have proper nutrition, some shade. Hmm? If you want to go from one place to other for a right purpose, do you have enough purchasing power to buy locomotion? Hmm? If you want care, medical care for your body, do you have enough with you to purchase medical services? That's the objective component of wealth, right? Whether you can have the essentials of life like education, 
in this sense wealth is objective but as wealth increases it becomes more and more subjective subjective means relational relative now if you have a car then you are very poor if you live in a locality where everybody has on an average four cars each or if you have a small car then you consider yourself not wealthy because all around you are people driving their huge suvs are you getting it which means that in its subjective component wealth is very much like fame not everybody can be famous and not everybody can be subjectively wealthy either so again that makes this approach very inefficient everybody tries to be wealthy only two succeed 998 do not get to be wealthy so they can never verify the statement that you made 998 are not even in a position to verify the statement that you made to succeed in just reaching the place where verification is possible and they verify and they find that fame and wealth are not the answer as is contained in the statement but then that has been a very very expensive journey expensive and therefore inefficient hmm? it is far better to reach your destination without consuming too many resources is it not if you burn too much oil in covering the distance hmm then first of all you are wasting your own time and money secondly you are a climate criminal hmm are you not so why release so much carbon undertaking a futile journey when the same realization can happen inexpensively and rather swiftly through other means